Hey guys and welcome back to a new video. In this video I will compare two very different and very popular approaches to state management. On the one hand we have a view model in Android that has individual state variables. So we have a screen, register screen for example. We have an individual email state flow and an individual password state flow. Or another very popular option is this one that we take a separate data class we define, bundle all the screen state inside of the data class and then just need to expose a single state flow here. I will compare those two approaches, um, give you the advantages, disadvantages, and then in the end, help you choose the approach that works for you. And only until tomorrow, you can still get 25% discount on all my premium courses and bundles that are already discounted. So if you've been thinking about getting some of these for a while, then now is a very, very good chance to do so. Link is down below, only until tomorrow from when this video comes online. So let's take a little closer look at these two uh, types of view models I've created here for a moment to see the real differences and aspect these differences they have. So here we have a view model A. We have a state flow for every single field. Oops. And that means if we have a screen with, I don't know, 20 different fields, 20 different states, which is definitely not unusual in a real Android app, then we will have 20 such combinations of a private state flow and a public state flow. Or alternatively, if you use compose state directly in the view model, which you can also do, then you would have 20 such fields inside of your view model as separate fields. Now with the other approach that tries to somehow solve this, you can see we bundle all, all these screen states together in one single data class. So we just have one state that we need to expose in the view model. On the one hand, we have that little overhead. We need to create a data class that we otherwise wouldn't need to create. So here we don't need that. But on the other hand, we don't need to flood our view model with all these private vals, public vals. But the main scenario where this approach at least has an advantage over the other approach is the moment we try to initialize these view models in our UI and then taking all those states that are defined in all of these view models and then passing them down to the actual UI, to the actual Jetpack Compose components that need the state. So for example, here, in main activity, we would have something like a register screen and with our, let's call it register screen A, because if we want to initialize a register screen, draw a register screen with our view model A, then that means for all these different states, we need to pass them down as individual arguments. So we would need to say, we have an email here that we pass down since the register screen needs that state and we have a password. And in this case, it's of course still super clear but as I said, in a real world scenario, we might have 20 such states and then we would have 20 such arguments for uh, the screen composable. And some people might argue that we can just pass down the view model instance. Of course you can do that, but the moment you do this, you typically break the compose preview in, um, in an Android Studio project because the preview is unable to initialize a view model that has a constructor. So this is definitely the better approach if you're choosing this to just pass these states down as individual attributes. Now, if you have a register screen B, with the other approach, then since we just expose a single state, we don't need to pass down all those state attributes individually. So we could just say state, register state, and no matter how big our screen is, we always need to just pass down the single state instance. So here at the UI layer, this approach clearly wins. And by the way, this approach, approach B, is typically what we implement with the MVI architectural pattern, while approach A is what we implement with MVVM. However, let's also take a look at the strength of approach A over approach B especially if we use such individual states with state flows, then that offers us much more flexibility in combining multiple states. So very often a specific state on our screen is just derived off of maybe two other states or just off of one other state. And we can just make use of reactive programming to automatically update a certain other value when one value changes. For example, whenever the email changes, we also want to update a state whether that email is valid. So a simple Boolean value. We don't need to assign this value in our own, but rather just listen to this email whenever it changes. We also might want to update and recalculate at least the, the Boolean value. And with having these separate states, what we could do is we could just say, okay, we have a val, is email valid? And we just make this dependent on our email state flow. And we simply map this to whether this email is actually a valid email. So this is a utility function I've added here. Implementation details don't matter in this case. And then we just take this, map it again to a state flow um, with a view model scope, sharing started while subscribed. So how long this 
um, flow collector or flow, um, flow chain will stay active and the default value will be false. So this way, whenever email changes, we will map it to whether this particular email is valid. Put that in a state flow again, which we can then observe in the UI. You can see state flow of tab boolean now. We can do the same for the password. So we can maybe show a little check next to the email text field. Say, is password valid? That's a password. In this case, it's is valid password. And if we then have these two states, we might also want to combine them. That's also what would be possible with this approach of view model A. Combining multiple states, and that whenever one of two values at least changes, that we map these to some kind of other value. So for example, val, valid inputs. If the email is valid and the password is valid, then we may want to enable some kind of registration button. Maybe we want to call this can register instead. So if we just have all valid inputs and we could combine these with combine to just combine two flows, is email valid? Is password valid? And then we say we get these here as uh, simple booleans. Is password valid? And we then simply say is email valid? And is password valid? So whenever both these are uh, valid, we will simply cache that result in a state flow again, same concept, sharing started while subscribed, and the default value is false. So whenever either is email valid changes or is password valid changes, we will recheck if all fields are valid, and if so, we, we might want to automatically turn on the register button and actually keep in mind to update that on our own whenever one of these values actually changes. That's really the, the whole idea behind reactive programming, which you can make full use of when having separate states, because we can perfectly um, derive other values from these and then combine these to other states. Let's take a look at view model B, how we would handle this kind of scenario there. Because with this approach, the definition is that our entire screen state must be part of this register state. So we would say we also have a Boolean is email valid in here, which has the default value false. Then we do the same for is password valid also false, and can register, which would, which would also be a Boolean. That's false. And if we still wanted to have the same reactivity, then we would need some behavior in our view model that listens to changes of this entire state object, and as a result, updates these values here. So for example, in the init function, we couldn't easily derive this anymore here, like we did uh, with these states, because we're not exposing individual state floats anymore. Um, but we somehow need to listen to changes of specific fields of this register state and then again update specific other fields. So we need to listen to changes of this email field and then update the is email valid field and possibly the can register field. So for example, we could say state dot distinct until changed by where we say, okay, we want to listen to changes of this email field. So that would still be possible with this approach. And then we map this to it that is um it that email that is valid email. And then we say on each, so on every single emission year, we would simply use this to update our state again. So we say state that update. And we say is email valid is equal to is email valid. And that is now the input here. So is email valid. But now we also need to keep in mind in our own that we also update the can register field because that's also dependent on this specific Boolean. We could also uh, update this in a separate uh, flow chain that would be possible. Yeah, let's actually do that. So we have a similar scenario as on the other side. And then we would simply launch this in view model scope here. We don't really want to cache this in another state flow, but really just make sure that this uh, flow operator chain is being called, that the email field is being listened to, mapped to where that's valid, and then the state is updated with that automatically. But that would mean we would also need the same thing here multiple times for the password, check if the password is a valid password, then have is password valid, update the is password valid field here of our state. And we would need another one of these. Um, oh, actually, this one here, we listen to our state. And now we actually want to listen to both these fields to whenever is password valid and or is email valid changes. So we can't use this distinct until changed by anymore since with that we can only listen to changes of a specific field. And the moment we actually need to combine two fields, this approach does not work anymore. We would also not need this map anymore. And here we would say can register is equal to, um, here we actually get the state, state dot is email valid. Um, st do we get the state? Ah, the error is missing. State dot is email valid and state is password valid. So this would now be the kind of equivalent thing, but the thing is, 
this on each uh, collector here will now be triggered with every single piece of state change. So whenever any field power of the state changes, we will also have to recalculate um, this Boolean expression here. In this case, it's fairly simple, but sometimes the derived states are more complex. And then now we don't have access to those individual fields as si a single state flows, which you can um, flexibly combine since the flow framework allows that. This will cause these kinds of workarounds here. Well, not workarounds, but scenarios where we have to accept that a certain code is called more frequently than it would have to. Because here in view model A, this combiner is really only called if at least one of these fields changes. It won't be called if there is some kind of um, is loading state, for example, that changes that has no impact on this actual state here. So in this regard, view model A, the MVVM approach is just more flexible. Let's next take a quick look at how updating a specific state works. So here in the MVVM approach, it is super straightforward. So we will just have a function that we expose to update a certain email, or like to update this specific email state. And here we would really just say email, Dot either update, which is a preferred, and we will update this with this new email value. So just one line, super short, super easy. In this view model B approach, if we take a look, we have an update email function as well. Then this is also fairly simple. Um, we would just update this state now, update this, but here we can't easily just pass the email since we need to um, create a new class instance of that state, which works with the copy function. And here we then pass the new email to the email field. So just slightly more code, but um, I would see this as a draw. So the amount of code you need for updating state should, should in this case not be the reason you choose one approach over the other. What's just very important is that if you update state flows here with this MVI approach, make sure to always use the update function because otherwise you can run into race conditions, especially if you work with uh, multiple threads in your view model, like if you use a coroutine running on the default or IO dispatcher then um, and update all the state as well from these coroutines then you could run into issues uh, due to these copy calls being made from multiple threads. With update, you're safe. So you can see in regards to boilerplate code, there really isn't the superior approach. So in view model A, uh, the boilerplate code is added uh, by having all these kinds of individuals, uh, in individual states as separate state flows. And if our screen gets 20 such states, we would have 20 pieces of such code, lots of boilerplate code. If we have a view model B approach and we take a look at that, well, then defining these individual states itself does not require that much space since we bundle these together and then just expose a single state. But you can see the moment we actually need this reactivity, we also have quite a lot of boilerplate code, actually a little bit more boilerplate code with reactivity than with the view model A approach. So it's always a little bit dependent on what you're doing. Sometimes you just need a lot of these manually updated states. And sometimes you can make use of a lot of reactive programming for a certain screen. So sometimes the MVVM approach might be a bit more boilerplate heavy, sometimes the MVI approach. So what do I do in my day-to-day -day work? This is really not to tell you this is the way to do it, the other way is bad. As you've seen, both approaches have advantages and disadvantages. I have worked on Android since uh, XML time, since a lo long time ago. And if you're working on a pure XML project, I would actually stick to the MVVM approach. So having separate states for every single um, piece of value that can change because that's an additional disadvantage of the MVI approach in XML projects, that the moment you have a single state, you would listen to this in a flow collector in your UI. And with every single piece of state change, so even if just one value here changes, the entire flow collector would always re-trigger and would always cause recalculations of how the UI would need to look like. It doesn't mean that every single view necessarily gets redrawn, but at least the look of the UI would be recalculated. But with the MVVM approach, you can listen to every single field individually and only react to changes of that specific field when it changes to only update the email text field, for example, when the email changes, but not the password text field as well. With Jetpack Compose, things have changed a little bit. So Jetpack Compose has a different way of detecting changes in state and Compose is actually smart enough to um, also only update those composables that should be changed when one part of the state actually changed. So with Compose, you are on the safe side when in regards to performance by using this data class approach, this MVI approach. And that's also the reason why I typically stick to the MVI approach in Compose, uh, because it's just, you reduce your boilerplate code for uh, more complex screens by, by so much, since you can just pass down the single state instance, not only just to the screen composable, but also to other maybe more complex child composables of the screen. And if you bundle this together with a sealed interface that bundles your user's actions, so things a user could do on the screen, 
you really just need two parameters for, um, for a screen, no matter how big and complex that screen is. As I said, otherwise you might have 20 states here being passed down to this screen. In addition, you would have maybe 20 user actions, 20 callbacks you would need to bubble up um, if you want to do it correctly, if you want the preview to work, if you want to allow isolated UI testing. Um, so for Compose projects, my approach is typically always MVI having one data class for, um, for each screen. But again, that does not mean that MVVM is bad. It also doesn't mean that it's bad for Compose. Try out both approaches. I always say, try it out. You have to, you have to really experience it yourself. Some people then prefer MVVM, that's cool. Some people prefer MVI, that's cool. Popular approaches are popular for a reason because they typically do the job. But I hope this served as a good help to decide for yourself. And as I said, if you want me to use such a state management approach in practice in a big project and also learn how you can do this on your own, then check out my courses because during winter sale, only until tomorrow, you can get 25% discount. For example, the Android Essentials Bundle, in which we build a really, really big running tracker app with exactly the state management approach that I showed you here. I'm sorry to go much, much deeper into that. But all other courses are also discounted, not just the Essentials course. Check it out. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you back in the next video. Have an amazing rest of your week. Bye-bye.